Well, here's a little video of the uh, Falcon V2 board. See, it's powered up. Get that wire out of the way. We got four ports running off of it. Here's my new IDC3 programmer. Very nice programmer. Amazing how quick it is compared to the Picket 3 for debugging. Um, the problem with the Picket 3 is, is that when you set a debug point, you need to actually pause the program and start again. Whereas this programmer allows you to actually just click the click a breakpoint and it'll automatically stop, which is really nice. A lot of times with hardware, you don't really want to stop because it'll ruin the flow of what you're trying to debug. So we have it connected to a matrix right here. I think this is a 16 by 32 matrix or 36 matrix. And it's outputting. This is running the 281118XX code. Um, so I have a lot of it working. Um, we're receiving E131 over the network and this controller was able to receive a hundred universes without a problem at, at, at a 40, mic, 40 um, hertz per second or 25 millisecond timing. Um, I have put a cap at 64 as far as what it will it actually receive. Um, but if you were to send it 100, the other 40 or 36 would not hurt it in any way. It receives unicast and multicast, and, and that's the 2811s. I'm ready to start working on the code for the 1801s, which I've already done a lot of. And then I'm going to work on the 3001 um, pixel codes. And at that point, I'll probably call Alan Dahl for his help with that. So there you go, the Falcon V2. Running some uh, pixels. The count will be 640 pixels per string. There's uh, 16 strings on board. But then this connector right here, this connector right here, you will put a ribbon cable on and you will be able to connect another 16 strings. It'll be uh, basically the board. You've probably seen it similar to the Beagle Black extension board. It'll be about that much of the board with the chips. So if you can imagine a little board about that size, is what it'll be. So hoping to finish this up. I'm going to work on the web pages, which I started about eight months ago, but basically got sidetracked with life. And um, it's going pretty good. We're running a real-time operating system called um, Free RTOS, and it's working really, really nice. And that kind of just takes away some of the burden of uh, you know synchronization between the different aspects of the program. And it's got timers and everything, and it's really nice to use. So. And that seems to be going pretty good. I was able to um, run 640 pixels times 16, receive 20 packets of, or, or update a web page 20 times a second, a dynamic uh, web page, and also while receiving, you know, 100 universes. So the board's really a workhorse. All the all the power is uh, offloaded onto the FPGA right there, and. Um, this really put, puts it out. Each string type, each string will be a different string type, so possibly 32 different string types. And um, what else is there? Uh, it's got four DMX outputs. You can see them right here. So there'll be four DMX dedicated outputs with RS-485 buffer. Everything will be hand. The bottom board you see is completely non-surface mount so it could be co-opt and kitted and the only board that's surface mount is the little board on top this little two by three inch board or three by three inch board or less than that and it's got two main surface mount components You've got your fpga right here and your pick in your processor it's a pick 32 mz new processor and then let me see if i can get it this little five board which we made right there it's the size of an Ethernet connector, but that has about 40 parts on there, so that's surface mount too. So if you're running E131, like a lot of the other controllers, then that's you'll get that little board. If you don't want to run E131, you can either receive Pixelnet. That's what these jacks are here for. We have Pixelnet in and two Pixelnet out. If you're not running Pixelnet, you don't need those connectors unless you wanted to input Renard if we do that or something, but that seems like a limited amount of channels or DMX, but that's possible. 
Um, and then on the back, let's see if I can pick it up here while oh, it's running. On the back, you can mount a pie. There's a pie connector where you would mount the pie on the back if you wanted to run it standalone or in bridge mode. And the pie offers actually everything that the E131 little board does right there on the top. But what the pie does is it actually allows this controller to run standalone with music. And um, it's almost about the same cost as running it with that little board. So that's kind of a sneak peek little video and that's it the Falcon V2 coming your way soon thanks